All right, so the plan of attack is today we will do 5.4. Next week we will do 5.5 and then we'll have a chapter five test. And then as, we, as uh, announced, 5.6, we will do on a couple a couple lectures. We will not be doing the uh, textbook, but I will be giving you some uh, other stuff to do the related rates, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Oops, so we're, we are started, okay. All right, so let's go. 5.4, we are on page 224, modeling and optimization. So we're gonna go ahead and now kind of put together everything that we've learned. We've learned how to find points of, that are gonna be your look max or absolute max and min. And so that kind of clues you into the optimization part here, right, okay? So if you have a real life, so we're gonna be doing a lot of like real life stuff today. So in real life, we can use the concepts that we have learned so far in chapter five to optimize or maximize our profit or minimize our costs or all these type of things. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. So we're on page 224. Let's go ahead and start with example number one. Example number one, find two numbers whose sum is 20, product is as large as possible. So we have two numbers, X and Y, they're gonna add to 20. So we know that they add to 20. And we're trying to maximize or find out where the product is large as possible. And where product is large as possible, well, this is pretty simple, right? So y is gonna be equal to 20 minus x. Let me just go ahead and stick that in here. And we're gonna to try to maximize this guy. So there are several ways to do this. The easiest way is just go ahead, go ahead and draw the graph. If you draw the graph of this, this is gonna be 20x minus x squared. So it's gonna be zero. and 20, okay? So we wanna maximize this graph, basically what we're doing, right? So it's obvious it's gonna be here, right? And where's the, what's the X value there? 10. 10, right, it's right in between, right? Right in the middle, right? Because it's a parabola. So it's gonna be 10, so it's gonna be 10 times 10, which is gonna be 100 right there, right? which kind of makes sense when you think about it because there's gonna be something special that happens when both numbers are the same, right? 10 and 10, okay? So that'd be the easy way to do it. Okay, now let's get into something that's a little more complicated. Let's see if we can do example number two. Example number two, we have a rectangle that's to be inscribed under one arch of the sine curve. one arch of a sine curve. Sine curve goes from zero to pi. And we're gonna put a rectangle in between here, right? Okay, so this point is gonna be pi over two. And we want to find, so in order to find, we want to find the largest rectangle that we can put in here. So we have to come up with some sort of way to represent the area of this rectangle, right? Because it says the largest area rectangle, the largest area rectangle, okay? So if we call this thing X, so if we call this guy right here is gonna be X, right? What is the height going to be at X? Something going to be it's going to be the sine of x, right? This is going to be sine of x. The height's going to be sine of x. So I know that the height's sine of x. All we need to do is find a way to represent the base, the base length here, right? The base length here is going to be what? I know from here to here is x. 
I know from here to here is pi over two. So if I can find this length here, I can just multiply that by two, right? From here to here, here to here is gonna be the same. So what is this, the, the pink length here? Wouldn't this be nothing more than pi over two minus x? So the base is going to be two times this. So your base is going to be two times pi over two minus x. That's your base. So the area is going to be the base two times pi over two minus x times the height, which is going to be sine x, right? So the area is going to be, if I put the two in here, I'm going to be pi minus two x sine x. So this is the area, okay? So we want to make see where this is going to be the maximum height. So we need to find how this is going to act there, right? Okay. So we have that. So what's the, what's the next step? You just put them together. Well, you put them together here. So now we have to take the derivative of this, right? To find if there's any critical points, right? Or stationary points or whichever one, right? Okay, so let's see if we can do that. So I'm gonna have A prime is going to be the derivative of this. So this is what, what are we gonna use here? This is the product rule right here, right? This function here and this function here. So first I'm gonna take the derivative of this, which is going to be negative two. I'm gonna multiply it by this function, which is sine x. And then I'm gonna have pi minus two x. Take the derivative of this guy, which is going to be cosine x. So I need to find where this is going to be equal to zero. So what am I going to get? So I set this equal to zero, what do I get? Sine x, All right, what else do I get? So the book has you just go ahead and it go, it goes ahead and uh, tells you to graph it out because there really is no way to find it, right? The only thing that we can do is possibly divide the cosines out and then that would be what? I would get tangent x here, right? So tangent x would be if I take the two over here, it's gonna look like this. Everybody follow that? Did I go too fast? Are we good? Why don't you just graph the first one. Yeah, you just graph. You just go ahead and I mean, if you go ahead and graph this, you can find that it's going to go. X is going to be equal to 0.7104. Okay, so that right there tells you what. Since that's the zero point, and it's going to be what. It was like this, right? So what's actually going to happen? If you think, what's going to happen? So can anybody tell me what this is? Does anybody know what this is? Does anybody recognize what this is? Uh, root two over two. Root two was 0.1. Okay, we're getting close. Root two is what? This is root two. So I divide this by two, what do I get? I get 0 0.707, right? So this is kind of close to that, but it's not really that. Can anybody tell me what happens when I multiply this by four? Is that gonna help you anything? Uh, I guess that's not gonna help you anything either. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do that. So here you go. So this is your answer right here. Okay.
Ah, exploration one, should we do this or not? Let's go ahead and do an exploration one. So we're gonna have some time left over today. We should have enough time to finish this and do this. So exploration, the bottom of page 225, bottom of page 225, a cone of height H and radius R is constructed from a flat circular disc of radius four inches by removing a sector AOC of arc length X inches, then connecting the edges, okay? What are the length X will, what arc length X will produce the cone of maximum volume and what is that volume? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the hard part here the hard part is this, the hard part is actually, you have to be able to find from here. So this is gonna be an arc length of X, X is from here to here. I'm removing this, I'm cutting this out and I'm gonna take this fan shape and connect this point here and this point together to shape a cone that's going to look like this, where I'm gonna have R and I'm gonna have H, okay? So, well, this was R right here, right? And this R here is gonna be different because it's not the same R. It's gonna be, be less or more than this R. How am I going to find this R right here? Very carefully. Very carefully. This is four. Okay. All right. So the circumference of the base is going to be from here all the way around to here. Do you see that? Because I removed this fan shape, right? So the circumference of this initial circle was what? Two pi r, so it's four, so it's gonna be eight pi, correct? Eight pi, and remove, how much did we remove from there? X. X, right? So the circumference here is gonna be this, correct? So two pi r, it's going to be the same as that. So this is the crux of the problem, okay? So this is step one. This is the first thing you have to get. You have to get this, okay? So the R that we, that we the new newly shaped radius here is going to be what? Eight pi minus X divided by two pi, correct? Can anybody tell me what this length here is? The side length here? Four. That would be four, okay? So now that we know R and now that we know this, we can find H because there's gonna be a right triangle here, correct? So four squared is equal to H squared plus R squared, correct? And we're trying to find H. So H is gonna be equal to square root of 16 minus R squared, correct? Where R is what? R is this guy right here, four minus X over two pi. So I'm gonna put that in here. H is gonna be equal to the square root of 16 minus four minus X over two pi, this guy squared, okay? So what is the volume of this cone? Volume of this cone is going to be what? Pi r squared times h. And what's the magic number in a cone? Three. Three, right? One third, right? One third. So the volume is going to be one third h r squared, where h is this guy.
e pi squared, right? This was h. R squared is, we can get it from here. Well, actually, we can't get from there. Uh, where, no, R is going to be this side here. So it's going to be 4 minus x over 2 pi squared. And that is shown there where it says the volume. Can you see that volume where it says the volume there? Uh, why is there, why is yours one third and it's pi over three in the book? Oh, there's the pi, we're missing the pi, pi r squared, right? Right, pi r squared, because this is the area of the bottom times the height, pi r squared, so that's why I'm missing the pi. Good catch, thank you. Okay, so now that is that guy there, okay? So what would you do with this to find out where it's gonna be the maximum? You would have to find the critical points here, right? So you'd have to take the derivative of this guy, right? And find out where it goes to zero. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that part, but I'm just, I'm just gonna go, I just did the setup part for you. Okay, are we good with that? All right. Okay, so that was exploration number one. Let's flip that over for the page. 226. So on page 226, so this is kind of a fun one. That was kind of a fun one. So on page example number three, example number three, we go back to our trusted friend that we did many, many times in honor. the box. You remember this? Yeah. This? So we're going to have a 25, so we have 25 inches by 20 inches, and we're removing the x by x squares here like we always did. And then we're going to fold these up to find, to make an open, open top box, okay? An open top box is to be made by cutting congruent squares of side length x from the corners of 20 by 25 inch sheet, sheet of tin and bending up the sides. How large should the squares be to make the box hold as much as possible? So what are, what are we trying to find? It says the, the box wants to hold them as much as possible. What, what is that? The volume. That'll be the volume, right? That'll be the volume, right? So the volume, if you remember this, the height would be x, right? Because we're removing x by x. So the height would be x. This is going to be 25 minus 2x. This side here is going to be 20 minus 2x. Okay. What is the implied domain here for x? X has to be what? Has to be greater than zero, right? What else do we have? How large can it be? Um, can't be bigger than 10. 10, correct? Because I can only, because this is only 20 inches. So the most I can remove would be 10. So this here is your implied domain. So within here, you have to find out where this becomes the smallest, right? So again, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the V prime. So V is going to be equal to this guy. So if I do this, I'm going to get X. Let's go ahead and do this guy out. I'm going to get 500. That's 25 times a 20. 2X times minus 2X times minus 2X is 4X squared. And for the X, I get minus 40, minus 50. So it's going to be minus 90X. Right, so let's go ahead and put the x through. So the prime is going to be equal to 500 minus 180x plus 8x squared, right? 
So if um, I do this, down. where am I at? Oh. Through, through, through. I you do stand. this. It's not going to be exact. So I just go ahead and put it in the uh, quadratic equation because it does not factor out. So I do that. I get V1 is going to be equal to, or the V um, X, where I'm going to set this equal to zero, I get X is going to be equal to 3.681 or 11.317. Obviously this guy here does not work because it's greater than 10. So I'm gonna end up with this guy being my magic number. Uh, Mr. On? Yeah. Um, isn't it like, it says eight, oh yeah, 12. 12, good catch, thank you. Okay, 12, right? Okay, if you do that, you're gonna get that. Are we good? Okay. I'm kind of reading off the book this year, right? I'm just reading off the book here. Mr. Ron, why do we have to do the derivative? Can't we just graph those first ones and find, find them? We do that too. But since we are learning this and we're, we're, we're all kind of trying to tie this together with our optimization where we are trying to find the critical points. That's what we're doing here. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yes, it is possible to go ahead and just graph this and find out where it's the highest. Right, you can do that too. Okay. All right, example number four, we go back to another one of our favorite ones and that is the can. If you remember correctly, I told you when we were doing honors pre-calc that this would come back in calculus. And we would actually do that, do it without having to you do all the stuff. So here we go. Designing a can, you have been asked to design a one liter oil can shaped like a, rec a right circular cylinder. What dimensions will use the least amount of material? Least amount of material meaning what? What does that mean? Translate it, translate that surface. into math talk. Surface area. Surface area is the smallest, right? So this is R. You're gonna have H here. So the surface area, if you do the hours out, then when the top and bottom out, it's going to look like this, right? Like this, where this is gonna be R, right? The height is H. And we know that the base of the rectangular is going, rectangle is going to be the same as a circumference of this guy. So it's gonna be two pi r. So the surface area, is so gonna be the rectangle, h, plus two of these. So it's pi r squared on top and bottom. So it's gonna be two pi r squared. We just now have to tie in the h and the r together. And what ties that together for us? The volume is what? Volume is one liter, correct? Which is a thousand cc's, which is a thousand centimeters cubed. And these are all in centimeters. So the volume is going to be pi r squared times h. And this is a thousand. So h is gonna be equal to 1000 divided by pi r squared. And I can put that in here. 2 pi r, 1,000 pi r squared plus 2 pi r squared. Pi cancels out. One of these r's cancel out. I'm going to end up with 2,000 r plus 2 pi r squared. So again, now I have to take the derivative of this guy. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of that. S prime is going to equal to, what, uh, what do I get here? This is the same as 2000 R to the minus one, right? So if I take the derivative, I'm going to get minus, minus one. And this is going to become R to the minus two. 
So that's going to be 2000 R squared. And this guy here, if I take the derivative of this, it's going to be four pi r. If I set that equal to zero, I'm gonna get four pi r is equal to 2000 pi r squared. I move the pi r, the r squared over here, I'm gonna get r cubed. You divide that by four pi on each side. So that's going to equal to 500 pi. And so R is going to be the cube root of 500 divided by pi. Okay. So there we go. Are we good? Any questions there? Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, take a break here. We'll go ahead and stop right here.